and sunshine. And if you want first layers that get karma on Reddit, you need a level bed. Now, most YouTubers will show you how you can use a piece of paper and just go chick, 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 between your no nozzle and your bed. However, that's kind of boring. So I designed this. This is effectively a dial indicator. A dial indicator uses a clever arrangement of gears and springs to indicate a difference in height that the user would not be able to discern with the naked eye. If you choose to 3D print gears, you can't print them as small as you can machine them, which again results in even more backlash than you usually would get. And as everyone can tell you, backlash is the enemy of precision. And in addition to that, you have to add even more backlash if you design a print in place. And yeah, of course you have to design a print in place. Like what, are you gonna waste time assembling something? What are we, savages? No. Hence why designing it with a conventional mechanism would lead to an undesirably large print. But luckily, we do have an extra ace up our sleeve, and that is compliant mechanisms. Now, compliant mechanisms is basically fancy talk for, yeah, it bends. And that is exactly what we use here. Instead of using gears and linkages, which have a lot of slop in them, we designed a compliant mechanism to bend in the right way. In this case, we're kind of using a reverse Archimedes lever, where instead of actuating the long end and get a lot of force on the other end, we actuate the heavy end and get a lot of movement on the other side. If you're using this type of mechanical advantage, or should I rather say mechanical disadvantage, you get a lot less force to be able to bend the plastic. However, if we make the plastic thin enough, even a slight force, as we have here, is enough to bend the plastic. And that's exactly what I did here. I designed the pivoting point as I designed my 3D printed brushes, where I used single strains of filaments between two points to make the pivoting point. This technique gives us two advantages. First of all, the plastic that needs to bend is thin enough to be able to be actuated. And second of all, the pivoting point can be a lot smaller than what it usually could. Usually, if you have parts that are less than 0.3 mm from each other, the parts would stick together. However, since we stagger the layers, we can put them as close as 0.1 mm to each other, which results in even greater mechanical disadvantage. Okay, this is all fine and good, but how do you actually use this to get a nice and level bed? It's actually pretty simple. You just attach this to your extruder head and then swipe it along the bed. Then the indicator will indicate high points, low points, or if your bed is sloping in either direction. And since I designed the stem to be 8 mm, just like every other dial indicator stem, you can just search the internet for dial indicator holders and find one that fits your 3D printer. Since the dial indicator only indicates height differences, you will still have to set your nozzle at the correct height at one point. However, once you've set it at one point, you can simply sweep across your bed and see if the rest of your bed is level compared to that one point. Using a dial indicator like this will also confirm your suspicion if you have a warped bed or not. In the download files, I include one of these little bridges that you can use to indicate and measure different types of things. I managed to indicate a piece of paper that was 0.05 mm thin. In addition to this, I also designed a dial indicator holder for the Ender 3. This one you can probably also use with the CR10. Now, let's get on to printing. Usually with my designs, you can use horizontal expansion compensation to make the clearances between two parts bigger. However, if you use it, the small strains of filament that go between two points would disappear. So for this case, I've made a few different ones with 0.3, 0.4 and 0.5 mm clearances. The part has to be printed at 0.2 mm layer heights with a 0.4 mm nozzle. The dial indicator prints in about one hour. <laughs> now that you have a level bed, the only way you can improve your printing is by subscribing to this channel. I mean, make sure you try to print out some of my other designs as well. I have a spring-loaded box that uses a lot of clever tricks to print a whole thing without any supports and any assembly. Check that out. So, thank you for watching. See you guys later. Bye! <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe. It's free.